And my first guest is a special one. Uh, Ehud Olmert is former Israeli Prime Minister, someone who was in charge when uh, Israel led an invasion of Lebanon in 2006. I appreciate you joining us, Mr. Olmert. We are exactly one year on from that horrific terror attack of Hamas in Israel. One year later, what do we find? An escalating conflict that has claimed thousands of lives. Put in your words how you see the last one year. Has it now reached a point of no return, this conflict in West Asia? No, I think that uh, this has been a terrible year, no doubt. Uh, Primarily for Israel and for thousands of Israelis that were butchered and uh, raped and uh, killed in the most uh, terrible manner and uh, subsequently for many other parts of the country and then of course also to many thousands of Palestinians living in Gaza uh, in the areas where uh, Hamas uh, is uh, in control and uh, Hamas in purpose use the uh, civilians in Gaza as a human shield in order to protect themselves from the Israeli counter-offensive. This has been a very difficult, a very painful, uh, a very bloody year. I think it's time to end it. And uh, my first uh, expectation is that Israel will decide to stop the war in Gaza. Uh, We uh, have... uh, broken down the uh, uh, Hamas military power. Mm-hmm. Uh, we destroyed most of the tunnels on the ground Gaza mm-hmm. and uh, killed uh, most of its uh, uh, fighters. And uh, there is so much that you can achieve in a military operation. At this point now, as you have mentioned, there are 101 Israelis who are still held uh, by Hamas as hostages. And uh, if we need to stop the war in order to bring them back, then we have to do it. Now, you're calling, Mr. Olmert, for a, for a cessation of hostilities on the very day when Israel has pounded Beirut, when Hezbollah has targeted Haifa, and when there is fear that there could be an escalating conflict involving Israel and Iran. Are you saying that it is even now possible to de-escalate, given that all indications, including what your Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seems to suggest, is that this is a fight to the finish? You can only call for de-escalation when it's escalated. And uh, indeed, as you have mentioned, there are hundreds of rockets shot at uh, Israeli civilian centers from across the border in Lebanon which uh, requires an Israeli response by the Israeli Air Force in the uh, headquarters of uh, Hezbollah in the the Dahlia uh, section of uh, Lebanon. But this is precisely the time where we have to hold on, all of us, uh, and to uh, uh, de-escalate what appears to be escalating. Uh, Just a few days ago, as you probably recall, the Iranians shot 200 ballistic missiles to uh, Israel. Sorry. There has never been in the history of modern times anywhere in the world such an attack of 200 ballistic missiles at the same time uh, moving forward with, uh, you know, 2,000 kilometers per hour or more uh, uh, right through to the state of Israel. Uh, thank God we were uh, skillful enough and uh, capable of enough of uh, intercepting them mm-hmm. together with our American friends and uh, European friends. But this is not something that can be tolerated. So, yes, I think that we have to stop the war in Gaza. We have to stop, hopefully, to reach an agreement about uh, Lebanon that will allow us to bring back the 80,000 Israelis which were vacated. Uh, out of their homes for the loss uh, for a whole year now mm-hmm. and uh, bring them back uh, if uh, the hostilities will uh, end in the, in the north. But most important, of course, uh, Iran has to be uh, stopped. No, how? Uh, let, 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 let's turn to that. You're saying ceasefire uh, in Gaza, which presumably means with the return of hostages. That's your presumably your expectation. Am I correct? You expect the hostages to be returned, in return for which there will be a stop to hostilities in Gaza. 
all of the hostages in one phase. Right. And Israel has to stop the war and eventually, of course, pull out entirely from Gaza uh, in the event that uh, security forces will step in instead of Israel. That will prevent any further attacks coming from Gaza. Okay. Towards so you're saying uh, almost simultaneously return of hostages that were taken one year ago and a cessation of hostilities in Gaza. But you said I Iran's actions cannot be tolerated. I read somewhere you suggesting that perhaps Iran's power installations need to be targeted. There are others who are talking about oil and military installations being targeted. How do you think Israel should and is likely to respond to Iran? Well, Israel has uh, enormous capacity, as you know, and you have witnessed it over the last uh, month and, and weeks uh, in every direction. Just the way, by the way, just an hour ago, there was a ballistic missile shot at uh, from Yemen by the Houthis to, uh, to, uh, into the state of Israel, uh, trying to target the uh, international airport at Ben Gurion, mm -hmm. and it was intercepted also. And this is all Iran. Iran is in uh, Yemen, Iran is in Syria, Iran is in Iraq, and Iran is in Lebanon. So the question is, what is the uh, priority of Iran? I didn't suggest that we will destroy. We can uh, attack the uh, nuclear capacity, the nuclear program of Iran. We can attack the uh, oil uh, headquarters of uh, Iran, uh, every part of Iran. Uh, I don't suggest this. I suggest that Israel will retaliate precisely the same way that the Iranians attacked us into military installations around Iran. But the question is, what is Iran after? Iran must know one thing. If they will continue the shooting at Israel, mm -hmm. they will not face Israel only. They will face the United States of America and possibly also uh, European countries that will fight with Israel to defend the Western uh, countries against this Islamic fundamentalist, extremist, uncontrollable, uh, bloodthirsty uh, attitude. Uh, but, but, and, many, but many, Mr. Uh, Olmert, believe that this is exactly what Benjamin Netanyahu also wants. He wants a war with Iran because that will bring the United States in and that will actually widen the conflict. You're talking about de-escalation. Effectively, the moment Israel strikes on Iran, you're escalating the conflict and probably bringing the United States into it. <laughs> you have to be slightly, if you can, if you don't mind, to be slightly more accurate. First of all, as you know, I don't speak for Netanyahu and I don't speak for the Israeli government. Sure. I'm in opposition to Netanyahu and I'm in opposition to the yes. Israeli government. I believe most of the Israelis. But one can't ignore the fact that Iran started shooting ballistic missiles to Israel, first in April of uh, this year, mm -hmm. and now just uh, less than a week ago. Uh, in, in a way that has to be answered somehow. And, and uh, uh, what I suggest is that the Israeli answer will be such mm -hmm. that it will not trigger an expansion of these hostilities. Mm -hmm. So the Iranians will have to understand that whatever they do, the fact is that they shot 200 ballistic missiles and there was not one Israeli hurt personally, f physically. Okay, so they have to decide whether they want to continue this game, which may cost them a great deal more than it costed us up until now, particularly because they are going to face, as I said before, the United States right. and other countries together with Israel. So my desire is that this will end. It will allow us mm -hmm. to end the war in Gaza. It will allow us to end the conflict in the north, hopefully, uh, if Hezbollah will understand that it has been very painful to them uh, in the last few weeks and it can be even more painful and it can be more disastrous to Lebanon and we are not interested how, in it. We, how, how do you respond?